Hi guys, welcome to this year's entry for the ATLTF build off for 2018. And we'll give you a little bit of a walk around and stuff. Piece of video right now as I'm talking. But basically, I ended up picking up a Wizard AYP chassis, and that particular chassis happens to be basically a sister design to the LT1000, but the thing about this is it's a side shift chassis. I haven't been able to get a hold of a side shift yet. I have a couple of concerns when it comes to building with this. One of the, one of the major concerns that I'm worried about is whether the 22 inch bear claws are going to go and fit in underneath that chassis setup. The other thing about this wizard is it's running a spicer in the rear end. Now for those that have been around my channel, you saw my spicer bomb video where I ran a spicer transmission with my zinc locker setup that I came up with. Now that transmission actually still operates today. It's actually fully functional and I've used it in several other different machines at this point, including plowing my driveway and main mud mower for almost an entire year. So. I'm really debating taking this spicer transmission that's in here. I've got about three other parts transmissions available to me and seeing what I can do for maybe another zinc locker setup and going from there. Maybe refine the process a little bit more for you guys. Zinc's readily available from most tire shops and a lot of times you can be able to pick it up at Harbor Freight and other places that sell weights for balancing out wheels. In the front, I'll end up having these extracts like I did on Main Munmore, but the big thing about that is I've got bearings to put in this year. So I did a how-to on installing bearings into a set of these extracts for the gas-powered power wheel build. Now we're going to ramp it up and we're going to see if that kind of design will end up working on thrashing on a mud mower. The other thing is, is we're not going to be running super winch. I've had some really bad experiences with the super winches. And so this time we're going to go with a different type of winch for this build. It's going to be this champion winch. It's a 2,000 pound winch. It comes with a hand control rather than all the button controls and everything. Um, which I've found in the past I've liked a lot better. The other thing is, is I run these 425 cranking amp Duralast batteries that go really well with the winching setup. It has more than enough battery juice in it to be able to go and winch it out of a decent mud hole and be able to go and start the machine back up once you fix whatever went caca in the mud hole. Um, as you saw, the motor I had to do some work on. I read all of the comments when they come through. I just ignore the ones that are written kind of ignorant. But when it came to the Mud Wizard, when I originally got the machine and I got it fired up, there were some of you that kicked back and said you thought it was a head gasket failure. And I agreed with you. And I did end up putting a new head gasket in. It's got a brand new head gasket. It's got a Chinese carburetor in it. It's probably the cheapest Briggs & Stratton knockoff carburetor I've ever bought in my life. Because the stock carburetor was just so gummed up, I decided it wasn't worth my time. Um... We'll see how that ends up working out. I think it was like 15 bucks. It literally was the cheapest Briggs & Stratton knockoff I've ever bought. Um, I've ended up already swapping out the gas tank for a smaller gas tank. And the reason being is because the extended distance gas tanks are hold like two gallons. Once you get the machine starting to go down a hill, it, uh, no, up a hill. Once you get a machine starting to go up a hill, for some reason they don't seem to feed correctly from what I've dealt with. So I put the original style tank from an LT1000 in. Um, the other thing is, as you can see, I've got the front plate already torn off of the hood. And the reason being is because I'm going to do a whole different hood mount system. I'd like to go and take the hood and make an internal skeleton design. The other thing is, is I want to go and mount up the hood in a more industrial fashion. I've seen a couple of L I've seen a couple of Murray hoods now where people end up bolting around the outside edge because the Murray has a metal front, and I really like that design. I think I'm going to try and incorporate that in this. 
The other thing about this machine is that in the original main mud mower when I built that, I built it so the body looked as stock as possible. And I don't want to do that on this build. I've decided I want this to be flashy and I want it to be something that stands out. So we've gone with a couple of things. First of all, I think the top of the hood is probably going to be a white color, but I'm going to be installing this air scoop that I picked up. And I'm going to make the air scoop a functional air scoop. That's one of my biggest pet peeves on the off-road mower community is when you see a hood scoop and you go, oh, did you put a snorkel into it? And they go, nah, it's just there because it was cool. No. I intend to set up a snorkel system. I want it to actually come up into the scoop and be up in underneath there. That way we're not blowing out head gaskets by putting them the motor underneath the water, bending rods, or any other tragic type thing. Uh, the other thing is I want the main body area where the kick pan is and where the seat sits and stuff like that in a darker blue like this. And I'm going to probably use a lighter blue for the hood area so that it matches more with the white. And I've got lettering to go across for Mud Wizard. Uh, the lettering was really cheap off of Amazon, so we'll see how that vinyl ends up working out. And I've also found these little 49cc scooter brake assemblies. I think we're going to see if we can incorporate that. I used to have a little Chinese ATV quad, and what I liked about the little Chinese quad was that it had a rear brake where you set your heel back and you press down on a lever so that you can literally stomp on the rear brakes. And I think I'm going to try and set it up so that the mud mower has something similar to that, some sort of cable type brake or something like that. That way you'll have your full clutch capability, your gas capability, and then your brake capability. And it really won't take that much to come off the brake and stomp the gas in order to clutch around. So that's where that idea is going to go. We're going to set it up stock to begin with, then we're going to see if we can upgrade the brakes. So the other thing is about this year, I'd like to go and try and later get into suspension for the front. I'd like to go and set up something like a dual I-beam suspension. As you guys know, the power wheel build was built on the idea of what if you scaled down a two-wheel drive pickup truck. And I'd like to pursue the idea of what if you gave a lawn tractor, the same kind of I-beam front end suspension as a Ford Ranger in the 1990s has, the two wheel drive version. Now, I'm not the first to go and try and do it, and there have been a couple others. I'm gonna post up a link to a MTD built by another YouTuber, and I think his setup is awesome. He also built a Sears with the same kind of idea. I intend to do mine different, but I want him to go and get the shout out for the fact that he definitely was one of the first. Along with that, I'd like to go and point out on these engines, if you ever get one of these Intex that has this big ginormous shroud and stuff like that, they're absolute junk. This is nothing more than just a sales gimmick to make the engine look bigger. The real reality is, underneath it is this shroud, which is the exact same size as a standard Briggs & Stratton cover. So what I'm going to end up doing is drilling out the mounts for the plate and I'm going to end up putting it on this. And I haven't decided what color the shroud should be. What do you guys think? What color should it be? So I've got a couple of other ideas in order to go and do along the way. Along with I intend to go and do switches across the dashboard. I'll post up a photo of those. And we're going to work on wiring those up. The other thing about this build is when I rewire it, I'm going to wire it based on how I would have liked it for off-road. Um, the solenoid should be in a location that you could jump it on the trail with a wrench or with a anything. It should not be in a hidden location like it is on these. It's in underneath this gas tank, on the inside wall, and in the middle of nowhere it would really suck to try and get to. So we're going to change that location and put it in a spot that's easily jumped. Um, along with that, I'm also going to be wiring in headlights. I'm going to probably do them the same way I did on the first main mud mower in that build. 
only this time it's going to be LED. I'm also going to include some red tail lights because my ultimate goal is to have this thing registered by the middle of this summer as an ATV and be out on the trails and go trail riding around the state in a couple of different places during the summer and take you guys along for the ride, obviously. So that's where we're sitting at this moment. And tell me, guys, do you like the idea? Do you like the way I'm planning out the build? What parts do you want me to make sure that I get on camera and there for you? And as always, have fun, stay out of trouble, and throw some mud.